more time, just the voices. Oh, Mary. Sing. Oh, Mary. I am of Judah. I'm good at and bless the Lord this evening. Truly he has prevailed. The lamb that was slain. The one who defeated death, hell and the grave. The one who is alive forevermore. Wave your hands and declare in the spirit of victory that he has prevailed. Open your mouth and bless him. Because he has prevailed, you have prevailed. Because he has prevailed, you have prevailed. Because he has overcome, you are an overcomer. Because he has conquered all, you are more than a conqueror. I can't hear your voice. I can't hear your voice. Open your mouth. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of their testimony. You cannot be quiet. Come and give him glory. Give him praise. Give him glory. Aradabo Sikabaria. Father, we thank you for what you will do tonight. We thank you for your presence in this place. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. Blessed be your name. Can you lift your hands for one minute? The presence of God is so strong in this place. Is it not written that where two or three are gathered, in your name you are there. And we bless you because you are here tonight. We lift our hands like the evening sacrifice. We lift our voice in reverence to ascribe worship to your name. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place. Abba Father, you are worthy of our praise, to you our hands we raise, you are awesome in this place, mighty God. It's a very simple song, I'll sing it again so we get it. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in this place. Oh, I love to worship Him. <laughs> oh, 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 you are worthy of my praise. Your voice and declare tonight. Awesome oh, 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 you are awesome. You are awesome in this place. I'm a father. I'm a father. Come on, let's declare. He's my praise. Oh, 
Everybody in this room, open your mouth and declare. We like heaven just came here. There are healings taking place already. Miracles are happening as you worship. worship in your own words. I'm not asking you to sing now. I'm asking you to customize your worship. In the next 60 seconds, let it flow out of your belly. What a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God. Truly there is none like you in heaven and on earth. Down beside you. Arababosia hadadadaba. Oh, 
to give God a wave of hand and for the next 60 seconds give him a shout of victory all over this room let the foundations of the earth know that there is no God like Jehovah hallelujah thank you father Psalms 119 verse 18, before we sit down, tonight is going to be an amazing night. The word of God will come fresh tonight with power, with light. You know, one of the things you experience when you come here is the wisdom that is rooted in the word of God. Psalms 119 verse 18. I want us to read it on the screen together because that's the prayer we'll pray before we sit down. One to go. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things. Can you turn that to a prayer in the next 60 seconds? Lord, open my eyes tonight beyond just a service, beyond just the sermon. Open my eyes. Take away the veil. Let the veil be removed. Grant me access to revelation knowledge, access to light. Come on, lift your voice and pray. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light the candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Lift your voice and pray. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Rabbi, 
In Jesus name. Please welcome one or two persons by your side and then take your seat in the presence of God. Like me then, like me Lord, like a candle, like me Lord, like me Lord, like me Lord. Can we sing it passionately as a prayer? Like me Lord, like me Lord, like me Lord, like a candle, like me Lord, like me Lord. Psalms 119, verse 105, and verse 130. I want to just challenge us from the word tonight. This is where we experience the wisdom, the presence, and the power of Jesus. This is pneumatic. There's such a thing as the encounter with the wisdom of God. It happens through the ministry of his word. I've always said it before and I'll say it again that the greatest miracle of a believer is transformation. That's the greatest thing that can happen to you. When the word of God comes alive before you and all of a sudden the darkness of ignorance, the veil that has been cast over certain areas of your life by reason of ignorance is destroyed. And all of a sudden, your eyes can now see light. That's my prayer for every one of us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Psalms 119, verse 105, and then verse 130. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word is a lamp to my feet. Is the lamb that guides my steps. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So the metaphor of lamp there speaks of guidance. That as you journey through life, God is obligated by the ministry of his word to bring guidance for every step, accuracy, precision that comes by reason of divine guidance. And a light to my path, it speaks of direction. So the word of God is capable of guidance and also capable of direction. It casts its light upon your path. And it helps you to see where you are going to. Meaning that the safest navigator to destiny is the word of God. It doesn't matter where you are in life. As long as you are guided by the word of God, you will never miss your way. As long as your direction comes from the word of God, you will never miss your way. Even if it was the wrong way, that wrong way becomes the right way. Verse 130. The entrance of your words give light. It gives understanding to the simple. And I've also told us before that understanding is received. It happens when the word of God comes to a man. The entrance of your words. John the Baptist was in the wilderness, the Bible says, in Luke chapter 1, in the last verse. He says he was in the wilderness until his season of manifestation. How did he know it was his season of manifestation? It's very simple. The Bible says in Luke chapter 3, that the word of God came to John in the wilderness. And all of a sudden, because the word came to him, he received definition. 
he knew who he was he discovered his identity he knew what he had been called to do and that was the beginning of his announcement it is wise that you don't set out in life on the trajectory of destiny until a word from God has come to you. It is wise. Life is not obligated to obey you or to supply you with all its benefits because of your name or because of the family you come from. No. It is because of the word of God. It is the word of God in you that compels everything around you to find expression according to the appropriation of time. He said the entrance of your words gives light. And it gives what? Understanding to the simple. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 8, another popular scripture. And then we'll make progress. Verse 8, he said, The Lord sent a word against Jacob. And it has fallen on Israel. Do you have it in King James? The Lord sent a word into Jacob. <laughs> he didn't say unto. Into Jacob. So when the word of God comes, it first of all goes into your spirit. Because it is your spirit that agrees with the truth that comes from his word. And then faith is born in your spirit and then the journey begins from your spirit to your mind where the word of god the information of that truth begins to transform your mind begins to renew your mind it begins to bring about a reorientation about what or who god says you are the lord sent a word into jacob one man but then it had an effect of, on an entire nation do you see how that the transformation of a nation, of a people, is dependent on the light that comes to one man? The Lord sent a word to Jacob. And that word became light on an entire nation. That's the reason why you are coming here week after week. It's because there is something from the word of God that must come into your life. And give birth to that which God has ordained. And then create out of you a savior and a deliverer and a blesser to all that is connected to you the lord sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel isaiah 60 verse 1 last scripture and then we'll make progress we'll read it on the screen at the count of three one two three arise stop did he say arise and shine? What did he say? Go on. For thy light is come and the glory of the Lord. Now that scripture is not a prophecy. That scripture is a fact. If it was a prophecy, you would have seen the, you would have seen the involvement of future tense. This is English we, would have talk, we are talking about. But it's a fact arise shine why for your light has come so when your light comes and how does your light come the entrance of thy word give it what light so when the word of god comes it supplies light and once that light has been supplied in you you have no option than to shine it not only illuminates your life it, it illuminates everything around you it floods everything around your life and your destiny with that light. The Bible says Jesus was the true light that lighted every man that came into the world. He said, and the glory of God is risen upon thee. The power of light. That's the teaching for tonight. And then we'll make progress. If you have written that topic, if you can, can you pray in the spirit for just 30 seconds as you're seated? Can you just pray in tongues for 30 seconds? Something is going to shift in somebody's life. I believe that the shackles of fear, the chains of fear will break out of somebody's life. 
the light of the word of God is coming to outshine every darkness. Believe me. Let your heart be prepared tonight. Something is about to be awakened inside of you. There's a transformation process going on inside of you. If you're following online, can you pray? Hallelujah. The power of light. So light is the word of God and the power of the believer. The strength and the power of every believer is the light of God's word. You are powerful in respect to how much light you have obtained. And I'm going to explain what light really is today. But it's important that we, we, we establish these facts that light is the word of God. I told us before that the greatest miracle of an unbeliever is salvation. Because that is when the life of God comes into him. And the Bible says in him was life and the life was the light of man. It's the light that comes alive that brings about the life of God at work in a man. But for the believer, the greatest transformation or the greatest miracle is transformation. So light that commands transformation is the greatest miracle for a believer. Not a car, not a house. Trust me. Not even healing. There is a level of understanding you will get to that some of these things will no longer be a testimony. They'll become normal. For instance, the Bible says he daily loads us with benefit. There is a level of conviction you get to on the strength of that word. That you no longer begin to ask God for supply of daily bread. It becomes normal. Your consciousness has been built to that point where you know that for every day that comes, there must be a miracle of supply. The greatest miracle that any believer can receive in this life is the transformation that is compelled by the light of God's word. Something from the word of God comes into your life and it reorients your understanding. It changes your perspectives. It builds conviction. Conviction is a powerful force, I'm telling you. It is on the strength of conviction that you can see the power of God manifest. That a man know that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that he asks or thinks. So beyond every reasonable doubt, that man is convinced that miracles are normal with God. And when he stands on the strength of that conviction in the name of Jesus, nine and ten out of ten times he sees results. So you cannot ignore the power of conviction. But conviction is only built when light comes to you. Light, all of a sudden. You know, if for instance, this whole place, if, if we were already in the night now, if the whole place was dark, and let's say only two bulbs in this hall was on, there will be light in this place, isn't it? But that light is not capable of turning this darkness around today. The difference between day and night is the degree of the luminosity of light. That there is still light in the night, but the reason why the night is separate from the day is because the day, the daytime, the light in the daytime shines brighter. So what makes it day is light. So I'm talking about a degree of light. Some of you already have some form of light from God's word. But it's not enough to command the level of transformation that is needed. That the chains of ignorance will fall from the mind of a man. It takes a degree of light. You know, some people get so used to their problem 
that even when they keep listening to sermons, they find it difficult to break out from that problem. The reason is because the problem has transformed them negatively and the, tra- the impact of that transformation on their mind is stronger than the degree of light that they are receiving. So I'm talking about light that is enough to outshine. You know that you know that you know and your conviction remains solid and single. So what is the opposite of light? Darkness. So if light is the word of God and the power of the believer, what is darkness? Darkness is the power of the enemy. It's very simple. Physically, it is illustrated through physics. If, if we were already in the night now and you shut down these bulbs, the whole place will be dark, isn't it? And because the place is dark, there is limitation of movement. Because the place is dark, there is obstruction of activity. In fact, this whole service may come to an end simply because there is darkness. And that is the work of the devil. The goal and the work of the devil is to bring limitations, bring inhibitions, bring obstructions strong enough to cripple the destiny of men, strong enough to stop that which God is doing in the life of people. So darkness is the devil's power. Darkness is ignorance. Darkness is evil. Darkness is wickedness. And the Bible says that the world, the whole world will be covered with darkness and gross darkness on the people. That means that there will be a level of spiritual ignorance that will make men continually wallow in misery and shame. He said, but at that time, the Lord will arise upon you and his light will be seen in thee. So God is counting on us, friends, in these end times that we will become the light of the world. That's what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, that what we are the light of the world. That's the reason why if you follow history, any place the church got to, civilization went there. Yes or no? Most of the schools that some of us went to were called missionary schools, isn't it? A church came or a missionary society came to that village and as a result school came as a result hospital came and gradually the road was constructed so that's that's the position of the church that in the midst of a dark and a perverted world we are to shine as light we are the ones that God will use we are the agents of transformation what is transformation a total change of form it begins from a change of mindset a change of thinking that is the reason why the word repentance means to change your mind it's not just lord jesus lord jesus no to repent means you cha- you were you were deoriented it's like you are thinking in a direction and all of a sudden because you you stumble upon certain information there is a change of course in how you think. So if there must be changes around us, there must be change in the minds of men. And the only force in the whole world that can command that level of transformation and change is light. And light is the word of God. I know that there are a lot of religions in this world now that claim to be light. Isn't it? There's one religion that they call the light and what? And sound. It's not a Christian religion. No. Those are what they call pseudo-Christian cults. I don't want to go into theology. Hmm? Even in the occult. Every religion tries to claim that they are light. In other words, they are the knowledge necessary for the advancement and the improvement of humanity but there is no other light than the true light 
and it is the word of life and i thank god that we have access to it in the name of jesus colossians chapter 1 verse 9 let me talk to you briefly about what i call the composition of light colossians chapter 1 verse 9 for this reason we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in what come again in what and what so there are three words we will deduce from that verse knowledge wisdom and understanding that we will be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding and when you have these three things that work in your life what's the result next verse he said then you will be able to walk worthy of the lord fully pleasing him being fruitful in every good work i believe this is the point where every one of us want to get to where your life naturally pleases god you now see why jesus had not begun ministry but the bible says god spoke from heaven that this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased the reason was because jesus was filled with wisdom and spiritual understanding and knowledge the bible says in luke chapter 2 verse 52 that jesus grew in wisdom and in stature he grew so when we are filled with the knowledge of his will and we have accessed wisdom and understanding the bible says we will walk worthy of the lord go back to that verse fully pleasing him and being fruitful in other words everything you do will prosper this is the, this is the realm every believer must get to it says in psalms 1 keep it on this scripture just digressing it says in psalms 1 verse 2 but his delight is in the law of the lord and in it he meditates day and night there is an extent there is a volume you must get to i'm not just talking about one verse per day or what is subjected to morning devotion and that's all no there will be a degree of light but is it strong enough to command the transformation that is needed is it truly strong enough is it voluminous enough to bring you to all that god has designed for you he says in it he doth meditate day and night and as a result what will happen because he's saturated with the wisdom of the word and the laws of god he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that kind of tree doesn't wait for rainy season it's already connected to the river he said that bringeth forth its fruit in its season whose leaves do not wither never a dry moment no level of no no form of spiritual dryness in his life He's always on fire for God. Why? Because there is a degree of the word of God, of light, sufficient enough to keep him constantly revived. If your car is on full tank of petrol, do you bother about stopping by any filling station? If your car is on full tank of, on pet, of petrol, you can jokingly enter the road and say, I'm going to Damatu. Yes or no? So think of it when your life is filled with the light of God's word. You can engage spiritual warfare at any time. You can walk over situations and dry bones will come alive. You can look over things that make people afraid and speak into those things. And they will obey your word look at the way jesus calmed that storm the bible says he was sleeping in the boat ah there is a level of rest you will get to my brothers and sisters this is the place god wants to this is the real miracle not what we celebrate thank god for the things we celebrate but if only you know that those are just makeshift arrangements there is a place god wants to get us to this is how we will operate in heaven this is how heaven operates where everything is possible he was sleeping how do you sleep in the midst of a storm 
when you are filled with the knowledge the understanding and the wisdom of the word of God <laughs> you can sleep anywhere in any storm your landlord can come and say my rent and you can tell him tomorrow I'll give you the rent not having anything in your account but because you know my God shall supply all my needs my salary is not the only means of supply it's, the, it's just the only means you have exploited And the Bible says he rose up. Now I try to imagine how Jesus did the whole thing. In my own mind. You know sometimes I think in pictures. I just believe maybe Jesus woke up and grumbled a little that they were disturbing his sleep. Because if you read the scripture very well, he just finished a crusade. And he told them let's cross over. And he knew that the moment he gets there, another crusade will start. So between this place and that place, let me sleep. Because if you have been, if you are in ministry, you will know how busy it can be. I remember last week, I went to preach somewhere. When we finished from that place, I knew I was going to come here. So in the road, I was sleeping in the car. Amen? Now, to an average person, that's when you should be praying and compassion for the next meeting. No. I needed that rest. The Bible says Jesus rose up. I'm sure he did like this. And he looked at Peter. You know that kind of look. I, I'll come back for you. And the Bible says he rebuked. Look at what the Bible says. I think he said it in Mark's account. He rebuked the wind and spoke to the sea. Hey, that's madness. When did the sea grow ears? <laughs> when you are filled with the word of God. You are carrying the creative force and power of God. So in your understanding, everything has life. The moment Jesus began to speak to the wind, the sea knew that the creator was speaking and it developed ears to hear him. Ah. And the Bible says there was a great calm. Give us that verse 9 again. The composition of light. I will explain briefly. It says that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So let's, let's, let's learn something here. Knowledge, understanding and wisdom. Three words. And these three words are the composition of light. What is knowledge? Knowledge is information. What is understanding? Understanding is comprehension. It is possible to have knowledge you don't understand. Yes or no? Yes or no? Come on, talk to me. Yes or no? Yes. Some of us in school are good crammers. You know how to cram. So even during the lecture, you don't listen. Because you know you just need two nights. Jack everything. 135 pages. You cram all the structures and all the labels in your head. And you are saturated. You are just waiting for exam. The moment you get into that hall, you just pour everything. And out you go. And ask that person one hour after that exam. He doesn't even know what he wrote again. So it is possible to acquire knowledge that you don't understand. Understanding is comprehension. Where you come head to head with that knowledge you have acquired and then it is simplified in such a way that it is assimilated in your mind. That your mind can relate with the reality that is embedded in that knowledge. Understanding. And then what is wisdom? Wisdom is direction. Wisdom is application information that has been well comprehended becomes a means of direction you now can apply what you have understood and then it brings about good success that's what the bible says in joshua chapter 1 verse 8 let this book of the law not depart from your mouth listen to this give us that scripture let me explain something 
He said, let, the book, let this book of the law not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night. It means two things. This, this is what it means. Shall not depart from your mouth. First of all, it means don't stop speaking the word. You know, in those days, one of the ways we learn how to cram is you keep reciting it, isn't it? Two times, one, two, two times, two, four. I know you will laugh. <laughs> I, I know. You remember? And then you keep cramming it like that, cramming it like that. So the more you keep saying it, the more it is sinking into your subconscious. Your mind is creating pictures with that information so that you can comprehend what it is saying. Yes or no? Yes. Then it also means when it says not depart from your mouth, it means don't be quick to say it until you have meditated on it day and night. It's like a level of fellowship you enter with the word of God. You, you, you keep thinking about it. You keep turning it over again and again. You are interacting with the word, trying to understand in your own terms what the word is saying. It is in that point that understanding comes. And the moment understanding comes, the door of wisdom has been opened. Because it is what you understand that you can apply. Yes or no? In mathematics, there are different formulas to solve different equations. You can have three formulas to solve, I think, what's, what's that? What's that? Uh, mathematics you do in secondary school quadratic equations right i know why many of us don't want to see it i know you are like me you, you just escaped eh? have five credits including math and english you had the credit and that's all but some of our science students are nodding when i'm saying mathematics i know that in quadratic equations there are about three ways to solve right there is one method they call the substitution method there's the another method they call the Huh? Talk to me. Elimination method. You are not. You will not be eliminated in Jesus' name. Next method, the third one. Formula, Almighty formula, right? Something like that. There are all kinds of Almighty formula in mathematics. Amen. But it is the formula you understand that you will use, isn't it? That's it. So when you have come to a point of understanding of the word of God, it is what you have understood that you can apply in real time situation. So knowledge acquired, understanding and wisdom is what composes together or what forms what we call light this is all that the word of god is to a man knowledge understanding and wisdom write this down the benefits of light genesis chapter 1 verse 16 to 18 the benefits what the power of light will do in your life as a believer genesis 1 16. then god made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night he made the stars also go on god set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light it begins to mentioned the purpose for why he created those two great lights to give light on the earth go on and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and god saw that it was good so what are the benefits of light or what would the power of light accomplish in your life number one the first purpose we saw there in that scripture is that he made those two great lights to give light on the earth so the first benefit is knowledge and wisdom to give light to the earth 
to give light to the earth. The Bible says in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shines in darkness and the darkness comprehends or understands it not. So the first benefit of light is what? Knowledge and wisdom. That you don't walk around like a fool. That you don't live your life like a normal human being. Read Psalms 49. The Bible describes how a human being is. It says man is life. It's like what? Vapor. That's to God. A, na a natural man. A traditional man. You know there are some people who pride in that. A traditional man. So apostle, eh, I know we are Christians, but I'm a traditional man. I, I respect culture. I love culture. Culture is the way of life. That life is headed for foolishness. As long as it is isolated from the light of the word of God. So that you don't walk around like a normal human being. The Bible says man's life is like vapor. It's like the beast that perisheth. But that you understand that which you must do. You know what to do part time. The Bible spoke of Jesus that he himself knew what to do. He asked Philip in John chapter 6. Give them bread to eat. But the Bible says he himself already knew what to do. So Jesus was never surprised by situations. Can you come to that point in your life at all? You know, knowledge brings a level of boldness and confidence. Have you ever entered for an exam you didn't reach for? <laughs> That's when you remember to recite all the Psalms that talk about the mercy of God. If you remember at all. If you want to know if somebody didn't read for an exam, those days when we were in school, after the exam, he is the first to arrive the prayer ground. Even if he finishes last. Because he knows he didn't read. So let's just go and meet God. God, if you have a way of entering that lecturer's office. <laughs> and I don't know, I know there are lecturers here. I wonder. <laughs> so they'll be praying for you. <laughs> You know, you think about it, you are a lecturer. You are a, you are, you are a born again, you know? And now some people are somewhere praying, Oh God, let my lecturer mark me good for everything in Jesus' name. <laughs> Somebody shout amen. <laughs> you know, it's like a dog. If, if you play with a dog, if you play with a dog before, sometimes you see the dog will duck. To him, you can't see him. But to you, you are like, my God, you are right there. <laughs> you know, I remember those days when we were in primary school. They taught us one trick. Oh, we do it. Kai, when I was a child, I, I understood as a child. <laughs> they say, one of our friends, he taught us, he said, if, you, if we don't do assignment, because we had this teacher that was very quick to using the rod. Amen? That scripture that says, spare the... Uh, spare the rod and so look there's another scripture i even saw in proverbs he said when you correct your child with the rod he will not die the, you know you know that place man. my god anytime your child misbehaves quote that scripture and pray in tongues and give him good strokes i'm telling you you know as i said, prayed in tongues your cane is driving the foolishness your the tongues is driving the spirit don't go and wound the child and say, Apostle, say, Amen. So one of our friends, you know, we didn't do assignments that time. And the woman said, if you don't do the assignment, we'll, she will deal with you. So he taught us one trick. I don't know where he got it from. Foolishness. Eh? Foolishness is deep too. It's deep. He said, remove the hair from your... Oh, you know it. <laughs> I mean, may God has to have mercy on all of us. <laughs> if you are getting blessed, say amen. It worked for one day. The next time, it didn't work. 
So the first purpose for why God created those two great lights, the Bible says, to give light on the earth, that there be sufficiency of knowledge and wisdom. This is what brings the advancement of humanity. This is what brings about civilization. Purpose number two, the Bible says that the purpose of the light was to rule over the day and night. Dominion is the second benefit. Dominion. God wants you to walk and live in dominion. What is dominion? What is dominion? Dominion has different definition. Dominion is unquestionable rest. Unnegotiable blessing. It's a state of life that is without opposition. It's a level of fullness you get into in the blessings and the benefits of God. It's a level of conquest. In fact, that is what the Bible means when it says we are more than conquerors. No more battles again in that area of life. And this is what God said to man that he should have dominion. He says subdue and do what? Have dominion. In other words, conquer the forces that fights against your supremacy on earth and then exact dominion. Is a state of championship. Is a state of lordship. Where you become lord over the situations around your life. Be it in health. Be it in business. Be it in finances. Be it in your career. Be it in ministry. There is a level of intelligence. Spiritual intelligence that supports your dominion. In every ramification. And that's the full purpose of man, to have dominion. Number three, benefits of light. We also saw in verse 18 there, it says to divide the light from the darkness. So first of all, to give light on the earth. Second, to rule over the day and the night. To rule over the day. That's another, that's another meaning of dominion, rulership. You bring everything under your control. What does it mean when it says day and night? Day and night is not just this literal day and night alone. But just the way you have day and night literally. As a sequence of time. You also have day seasons and night seasons in life. Listen carefully. That there are seasons of life that you can call night seasons. What is the characteristics of the night? Much of darkness, little of light. And I told you that darkness is ignorance, is wickedness, is evil, is misfortune. So there are seasons in life, listen carefully, that are night seasons. Job said in Job chapter 35, he said, Where is God my God? Who giveth me songs in the night seasons? Seasons where you are head to head with wickedness. Seasons where you go through lack and poverty. Seasons where you are seeing the opposite of what the word of God says. Seasons like the dear, dear lady sang, you know, told us before she sang. Wilderness seasons. What is in the wilderness? No water. That there is a point in life where everything seems dry. No hope, no fruitfulness. There are seasons like that. Those are what we call night seasons. Yet, God created light to rule over the night. That means before God, even in the midst of trials and tribulation, there is a level of light you should come in contact with from the word of God that still keeps you more than a conqueror. The Bible says, yea, in all these things, not outside, in all of it, we are more. That's dominion. Otherwise, you keep going in and out of depression. 
Otherwise, you keep you 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 keep becoming discouraged by the day. But there is a light you can acquire that even in your night times, in your dark times. What's that song? Even in my darkest hour, through the sores and the pain, there is still a song coming out of me. No matter how dark the night is, either the moon will shine. And you know, one thing with the moon is that the moon doesn't have light in itself. It's the light that reflects on it from the sun. And the Bible says that the sun is the word of God. He said the Lord is the sun and a shield. The sun is pictorial of a degree of illumination that comes from God's word. You know, the sun light is the brightest light. It's a light that you can see with, you can read with, you can identify with. So, God is saying exact or, 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 or retrieve enough light from the word of God. So that in the midst of your darkness, that light that you have attracted will reflect around you. During the day, nobody sees the moon. It's just positioned somewhere, receiving light. You know the way God trains us? A time in your life, everything is just going good and fine. And then you are reading the word of God and seeing the promises of God's word. It looks so sweet, that period. He said, if ye who are evil men know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your heavenly father not give good things? He said, he that who have you not asked, ask and receive, so that your joy... Those are marvelous, sweet scriptures. He are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, called out of darkness, you know, to show forth his praises, isn't it? God will leave you at that time. Keep enjoying the word. You'll just be speaking the word every day. I'm leaving the word. Then a time comes, a season of your life comes, where you see the direct opposites of those things you are confessing. Because the word will be tried. God will see how much of the word you had absorbed. How much light did you absorb in that season? Even those of you who lose solar power in your house, you understand. That it is the extent to which your cells are charged that they can become luminous in the night. The Bible says to rule over the day when things are good and in the night. Many of us stumble in the night seasons of our life because during the day you didn't attract enough knowledge. You didn't attract enough light from the word of God. It is only when you enter that mess you just realize you are confused. Confusion is the first sign of ignorance. Anytime you are in a situation and you are confused, is the first sign that you are ignorant, number one. Number two is a sign that you are bankrupt of the word of God. And what it will it give back to? Fear. To rule over the day and the night. Even if the moon doesn't come out, God does not want total darkness. He still created stars. You can't read with them, but at least they will give some form of light. So even when you go through those trials and tribulations, there are still sometimes God will come and a scripture will flash in your mind. It's just coming to awaken some level of illumination that will keep you steady until you come out of that season. There must be light. The sun speaks of the word of God. The moon speaks of the prophetic dreams and vision. The stars speaks of men and women of God. God has placed around you. That's why he says that he that winneth a soul is what? Wise. And the, wise, the righteous shall... Uh, thou, he said they that turn many unto righteousness are wise. And the wise shall do what? Shine like what? Stars. So if the word of God is not talking to you, he will talk through dreams and visions. If he's not talking through dreams and visions, talk to the stars around you. Tell your neighbor, talk to the stars around you. One time God could not speak, or Jeremiah didn't seem to hear the word of God. And God told him, go to the house of a potter. And right there, while the potter was making his pot, the word of the Lord came. 
That's why sometimes God, you have to come from meetings like this. I know that there are many of us going through all kinds of things in this life. This is the secret of your survivor. He says to rule over the day and the night. The Bible says even when Joseph was still in the prison and the Lord was with Joseph. That's what kept him till he met Pharaoh. If you don't have sufficient light in your night seasons, you may fail. You may fall. You may falter. You may compromise. Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know. What do you know? What do you know? Ask your neighbor, what do you know? <laughs> We can tell what you know by the actions you take. Mm. Number three, benefits of light. It says to divide the light from the darkness. Distinction and victory. That's the third benefit of light. Of course, light, which is, which is the word of God. It gives you distinction and victory. Distinction means you stand out. In Psalms 20, in verse 7, it says, Some trust in chariots, six rather. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we remember the name of the Lord our God. So the chariots and the horses were the idols of those ones. And then in verse 7, he said, They have fallen down. They have bowed down and they have fallen. So they bowed to those idols, but they fell. He said, but we, we stood up in defiance against those idols. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Everybody bowed to the statue, but they said, oh king, we will not answer you carefully in this matter. This is our stand. God will deliver us, but if he doesn't, we will still not bow. Why? Because they knew that God has said in his law, he said, I am the Lord God, and you shall have no other God before me. That's the reason why even when they were bound and throw, hand and foot and thrown into the fire, that fire that they were thrown into consumed them. The fire was what gave them freedom. Do you know that there are certain tribulations you go through? There are certain temptations, trials you go through that actually comes to awaken some spiritual potentials in you. Do you know? It's not all that should kill you. No. The Bible says the trial of your faith does what? Walk at patience. And he said when that patience is matured, he said then you will be perfect. And that's the place God wants to get you to. Distinction. It makes you outstanding amongst your equal. And that is a secret to a victorious life. Victory over death. Victory over sickness. Victory over poverty. Victory over crisis. What again? Victory over all the situations of life. Victory. In 1 Corinthians 15, in verse 57, he said, But thanks be to God who gives us victory in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Now thanks be to God who always makes us triumph. Always. Ha! When you are convicted with those kind of scriptures, you are not afraid to go through anything. You go to the result board and you have six carryovers. You know, sometimes... When you decide not to allow a problem weigh you down, people will say you are unserious. So what should you do? Tell me. You went for the job interview and with everything that happened, you know you are not getting this job. And this is the fourth interview in three months. The devil will say, go back, lie on your pillow like the ladies will do and cry. You know, there are two reasons why you buy a pillow. Generally to sleep on it. Number two, for ladies. 
You cry so much that you, you drew the map of Atlas. You drew, <laughs> you drew the map of Ukraine with your tears. Just come and intercede on the Ukraine you have drawn. Don't, don't look for any map. Just begin to intercede for them. Am I saying crying is wrong? No. No. There are times when our humanity catch up with us. But oh, that men are convicted by the light of God's word. Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph. Ah. So you know that whatever this thing is, is only for a while. You are coming. He said, but I reckon that the sufferings of these present times are not worthy to be compared to the glory that is to be revealed in us. And those are the things that gives you hope even in the midst of a storm. That was what David and his mighty men knew that made them mighty men. That one man would stand and defeat an entire garrison. David said, the Lord shall light my darkness. He said, for by you I run through a troop. By you, not by my hand. And by you I leap over a wall. No wonder one of his men, the Bible says, he stood in a field and stationed himself and struck down an entire, every strike he knew that he was going down. So when you know that it is either you fight or you go down in defeat, you keep fighting until you see victory. Oh, I'm talking to somebody this night. You don't, you don't allow the cowardice of fear to come. That's why you must stuff yourself with light. We invest in many other things. Bitcoin, cryptocurrency. But we don't invest in our spirits. It's good to pray in tongues. So, but when you have prayed, gather this thing and put it in you. A time will come where it is not, you will not survive by the blood that flows through your vein, but by the word that comes from God. When my mother was to give back to her fourth born, my immediate younger sister, they told her, I don't know how they do that. What that is it PCV or what? What? Is it PCV? They said her own was 16. That's very low, right? And she gave birth. Normal delivery. Alive with the daughter. They asked her, what's the name of this child? She said, Miracle. How do you give birth with 16? Your PCV is 16. The blood alone that will flow. Ladies, can I talk to you? Ah. Listen, invest so much in having the word of God in your spirit. Most especially if you know that you are not getting married to a man that is like me. And you must not get married to a man like me. Hello. Okay. That one that when you are in the labor room, you, say, in fact, you just said labor. Hey, he's already dancing up. <laughs> my wife, oh, my wife. Oh. <laughs> when you find yourself in that condition, that's when. Your wife wants to give back. They say, sir, she has five broad. And for us to save the life of your wife, we have to operate her, remove the baby, and remove the fibro. And it's 50 50 percent, 50 percent, 50 50 chances. But I know that my Redeemer liveth, and he shall stand at last on the earth. He said, Even though this king is destroyed, he said, Yet I know that in my flesh. Paul said that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God that raises. Doctor, take her to the labor room. You know why? Because on the strength of what you know, you are not seeing there too. What you are seeing is your wife and your child coming back. That's not the bargain from the beginning. Victory. Somebody say victory. That's the life of a believer. You are victorious at all times. At all times. Something bad happens to you. Somebody say, he's a believer. He say, oh, sorry, hard luck. You know, when I hear some kind of terminologies, I just know, I just know the mind of that person. You don't tell me luck. There's nothing like luck for me. 
What I know is favor. Hallelujah. So let's finish up now. Keys to accessing the light of God's word. Keys. Kingdom principles. How do you access light? That is the word of God. You know that light gives you knowledge and wisdom. The Bible says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. You know that light gives you dominion. You know that light makes you distinctive. And it makes you victorious. So how do I access the light of God's word? Scribble this down and then we'll be done and we'll pray tonight. Number one, you must be born again. You must be what? John chapter 3 verse 3. Jesus in reply to Nicodemus, he says, Except a man is what? Born again. He cannot see. He cannot see. The life of God must dwell inside of you. Otherwise, the Bible will just be another religious book. That's the reason why you can have professors of this book that don't have light. You know why? Because there has to be a life that makes it light. In him was life. And that life was what? The light of men. You must be born again. Jesus said in John chapter 8 verse 12 that any man that follows me will not stumble but have the light of life. So you must be born again. You must have the life of God in you if you want to access light from the word of God. Number two, desire. Desire. Proverbs 18 verse 1 in King James Version. It says true desire a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom his desire that makes him separate himself desire desire is very powerful desire jesus said in matthew 5 verse 3 blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is what the kingdom of heaven. It didn't mean that those who are poor, as in broke, no. And then we get all this religious cliche that the poor will go to heaven. Now, lie, there are still poor people in hell. In fact, it's easier to go to hell with poverty. Do you know? You don't know? Huh. Me and poverty, eh? We are. The distance between us is like the distance between Abraham and Lazarus. You know what Abraham told? He said, we can't go to you and you can't. Me and poverty, I have. What Jesus meant here is coming to a point where you realize that you are not satisfied and you want more of God. A point where you, you realize that you need to know more. Look at the, the, the spoken words the young man did. The more you know is the more you grow. That's what it means to be poor in spirit. You realize that you are not sufficient in yourself. And then you go to God as a sufficiency. That's what desire does. Desire is what prepares the heart of a man to access light from the word of God. That's the reason why a lot of people read the Bible and they say, this is what they say. The Bible, anytime I read it, I sleep. Anytime I read it, it's boring. I don't understand. No desire. That's just it, simply. You are just reading it to fulfill all righteousness. So it will become what? A book. But true desire. Look at what Job said in Job 23 verse 12. He said, I found the word of God. I found your word to be more than my necessary food. Right? He said, I have not departed from the commandment of his lips. I have treasured the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. You know what it means? What it means is, I would rather read the word of God first before having breakfast. Those days when we were in Nifes, we had one 
a slogan nbnb no bible no breakfast that means you are not permitted to eat breakfast until you have read at least a scripture of the bible with some of us you need that discipline on your life because truly man shall not live by bread alone but by every word it will take a situation in life for you to understand that I know some of us are uncomfortable now. I understand. Because in the morning, the first thing you go to do is to warm your food. I, I know. The food you left over last night. I know some of us love to eat from the pot directly. Let me not go there. <laughs> the more I know you, is the more I want to know you, Jesus. More. Isaiah 44 verse 3 desire desire means hunger are you hungry for the word are you hungry for light are you hungry for truth for I will pour water on him who is what thirsty the condition for receiving that water is that you must be thirsty What has desire from God for God's word driven you to do? How many stunts? <laughs> when a man is hungry, eh, you just know by his action, he becomes uncomfortable. He becomes anything is sweet at that time. Kuli kuli, granite. What else? Those days when we were in, in primary school, you know, during lesson period, we are so hungry, we've exhausted all our food in the box. So there's this tree, they call, I think it's breadfruit. That tree that you can eat the flesh on top, you know, agri, call it mesocarp or whatever. And then you hit it with stone and it will split. And there's something inside that something is very tiny but hunger will drive a man desperately you pluck so much and then you keep it. sometimes you may even hit your finger but that's what hunger physical hunger can do to a man what what has spiritual hunger driven you to do ask your neighbor what has spiritual hunger driven you ask your neighbor ask him ask her you know we are satisfied we just love the way we are with God. You are not concerned that it is a part of your life that there is ignorance. And the word of God is crying. Look at what he says in Proverbs chapter 1. He says, wisdom standeth in everywhere, every corner, even on the street. is crying, come to me, you simple ones. In Isaiah 55, he says, come buy wine and milk without money. When we are physically hungry, we do some people there, there are some people that are <laughs> I know a man of God who was telling me about another man of God who wanted to buy a Benz car. You know Benz. You know Benz. May God deliver people from Benz. No, Benz is good though, but you know <laughs> when you see an S2, what's it what do you call C240, C300, C400, S class. When you see that bank, have you entered before? Have you entered inside before? It's like you are in your parlor. And the man of God said, Man of God, do you have 200,000? I need to buy this Benz, this Benz, this Benz. Say, Man of God, this Benz, this Benz. Every time he calls, Benz, Benz. That, that's what a man can do for physical, material things. But what has spiritual hunger driven you to? You know, when you are physically hungry and you don't eat, something may happen to you. That means also that if you are spiritually hungry and you don't sachet that hunger with the word of God, there is possibility of spiritual death. Desire. Some of you need to buy a Bible and take it to your office. Trust me. Some of you. During break, Break is one hour. Go for 30 minutes. When your mates are just in outside, come back. Open that Bible. See. Do it now when everything is okay. Oh, because I tell you, there are seasons in life where everything will lie to you except the word of God. 
believe me when you wake up one morning and there's pain on your right side and you go and they tell you there's a mass inside your womb from where you are not married that time you will lose appetite for food but tonight god is creating spiritual hunger in our lives let me hear your amen better number three keys to accessing the light of god's word number one i said be born again number two desire number three what embark on a desperate search with prayer and fasting convert your desire to a, to emotion go on a search combine it with prayer and fasting you know i said prayer and fasting it looks as though fasting and prayer releases atomic power from the spirit there's an acceleration that happens to your spiritual experiences when it is combined with fasting and prayer moses fasted 40 days two times why just to receive the laws of god what he was supposed to receive was just the ten commandments but because of his embanking on that experience he went beyond the ten commandments and broke into certain things in god moses was the first man to have power to receive the power of creation he went back before time and he saw what happened and he wrote in the beginning god created how do you define a man that hits the rock and water comes out speaks to the rock and water comes out he's still talking and the ground opens and swallow people and it's not like god said it to he just told them he said so you people are joking with me he said today we'll know whether i'm a man of god or not he said if except i'm not a man of god if not the earth must open the bible says, while he was still talking in his anger earth responded why a man broke into a dimension of god so anointed was moses that even satan was looking for his dead body to tap anointing you don't know the bible says in jude that michael disputed with satan over what the body of moses even satan he said even when i was lucifer i didn't see this one i need to go and tap and that was in the old testament a man called elijah the bible says he moved around with camel skin it is said that camel skin if it touches moisture it begins to smell that means elijah possibly moved around with a stench sometimes yes or no that's the meaning that's the reason why even john the baptist civilizations later that had the spirit of elijah he just mind himself and stayed in the wilderness how do you read your bible sometimes and that's the man that prayed a prayer i said god let fire come down and consume this sacrifice so that they will know that you sent me ah you know when you when you car ah, there are realms you get to with god you can invoke some things you don't need to wait for god to see on the strength of what you had peter stood before that man at the beautiful gate he says such as i have what do you have you want to have something with god embark on a desperate search prayer and fasting only communicates your your desperation and of course elijah was a fan of fasting 40 days he went without food jesus went 40 days in the wilderness there is no man in scripture that stumbled on revelation of god's word that was not it was not a fasting machine paul said in second corinthians chapter 6 he said in fastings often it is a hunger oh. somewhere in that scripture he also mentioned that there were times he was hungry but he said in fastings often and back on a desperate search jeremiah 15 16 he says i found your word and i ate them and they were the joy and the rejoicing of my heart i found it and i ate it it's like bread 
you swallow it you don't know when you see you've been sitting for three hours you are just excited because something is coming alive if you don't get to that point my brothers and sisters i don't mean to insult our level of christianity but i tell you the truth to challenge you if you don't get to that point you will be a lightweight in the spirit you are light there are things you can't command so that you know before god is not stature Psalms 119 verse 162. It says, how did he put it? He said, I rejoiced in your word as one that found what? Great treasure. So, you embark on a search, prayer and fasting, and you begin to go one day, two days. Let me tell you the truth. Fasting does not end because the days are over. Fasting ends when you have heard from God. You fast to seek the face of God. No be so. Let's say you put three days to fast and at the third day God has not spoken. You can rest for the fourth day. Continue the next day. Your fasting is not over. And in fact, most times when God wants to try the depth of your search, the authenticity of your search, He will leave you for your seven days. He won't talk to you. Seven days you will come, shake your tambourine and be praying. Oh, 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 oh. He will just leave you there. <laughs> You know God, but sometimes He will leave you, forget you there. You go into praying, speaking in tongues, 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, three hours. You pray till you even forget why you started praying and God has not spoken. That's when you start praying. When you have forgotten what took you into the prayer, and you are now laden with the heart of God. That's when you started prayer. That's when the time started. When you do that and you are engulfed by the Holy Ghost, that's when you can go long in prayer. I know that is not the length of your prayer that matters, but nobody who has consistently prayed long that doesn't have his life changed. So don't criticize it. And I'm not saying this is for men of God, no. This is for every believer. You go to the occultic cycle and see what they do to get power. Then you will know that it's easier as Christians. I was watching a video just yesterday and the preacher was talking about a man who wanted political power. And what was the initiation? They put rotting snakes, dead rotting snakes and rats inside a bowl and they gave him to carry it for three days and sit by the riverside. No food. Okay, you think God is hard, ba? Let's go on. For three days, he must be carrying it. No food. He must be inhaling it. You know, that's just, that one will just transform you to be an animal. You become wicked, naturally. You see why witches are wicked? And why the Bible says we should not suffer them to live? In fact, this night, we will pray some prayers. I hope you are ready. Then when he finished, after that three days, he will go to the forest. Another three days in the forest. Then when he is done with that, still carrying it, they take him to the graveyard and then he sleeps by the graveyard. Another three days. How many days? Nine days. Concerning your finances, he will allow you. You know why? 
Because he knows that as long as he can explore that ignorance, he always keeps you bound. You know what ignorance does? Ignorance makes you put a handcuff on your hand and submit yourself to the devil. You become a lawful captive according to Scripture. So any area of your life that you notice any level of ignorance, don't rest until you make it a project. Decide again and again to sit on the word until light comes. For instance, what does the word of God say about your provision? Did the Bible not say he daily loaded us with benefit? Did the Bible not say my God shall supply all your needs? How? According to his riches in glory. Glory is infinite. So if they stop your salary, it was only an opportunity for you to see another means by which glory will supply you. What does the Bible say about favor? If, you need, if what you need now is for somebody to make a recommendation concerning you and you are promoted, that's favor, isn't it? What does the word of God say about favor? If you don't know, go to the word of God. Make it a project. Let's declare, listen to me, friends and family here and all those following online. In these last days, let the church arise and declare war against ignorance. Refuse to be ignorant in any area. People who suffer demonic oppression, their greatest problem is ignorance. There is a witch in the family and you are afraid. Some are even afraid to go to their village. Why? It's ignorance. Anywhere you see fear, ignorance. So make it a project. Search. And then finally, number four, as we pray, engage your spirit man in a search through meditation. Engage your spirit man in a search through meditation. Engage your spirit man. The Bible says in Proverbs 20, 27, that the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. A candle needs light to come on it. When there is light on the candle, you can use it to search things. So the Spirit of God will come upon your spirit. And then your spirit now becomes a, a searching instrument. Let me tell you what meditation is. Meditation is the process by which the life of God's word is absorbed in the heart of a man. It starts with thinking about what you have read. It starts with trying to remember that which God has said to you. It begins to work on your imaginations. And then all of a sudden, it looks like you are teaching yourself. Has it happened to you before? It's like you ask a question in your mind. And it's like you are answering the question. No. What's happened is that the Holy Spirit has lighted on your mind. And has given it the ability to access the light behind that ignorance. So it's like you are thinking a question and you are also thinking the answer. Have you been there before? That's what happens. That's meditation. That is meditation. In fact, that's one of my hobbies. That's why those of you who know me, I like being in a quiet place. I like being alone. I told somebody, I said, if I get married, I have to have, I need to have a house that has many rooms. So that when there's noise in the house, I can just go there and shut the door. You know why? <laughs> because many things are born in meditation. The revelation that will bring deliverance to your family can come in revelation. There are times I'm inside a napep and all of a sudden I'm thinking on some things and poof, light just comes. Sometimes a scripture will just flash and God will say, share this with them on Sunday. That's the reason why the word of God here is always fresh. No matter how simple or heavy it is, meditation i so love meditation that even when i don't have money if i enter in that paper i like paying for drop you know why it's space i'm paying for so that i can have time to think you know when we are four in that paper we we'll just squeeze like this 
he said but his delight is in the law of the lord and in it he doth meditate day and night so he's in the construction site he's a site engineer supervising everything but as he's doing all that he's meditating on his scripture what does the word of god say concerning favor okay proverbs 13 22 says good understanding giveth favor Oh, the Bible says, when a man's ways pleases the Lord, he maketh even his enemies. That's an, another dimension of favor. It was in meditation that I got the revelation that there are three dimensions of favor. Or there are three doors that favor will open for you. Door number one, opportunities. Door number two, resources. Door number three, access to the hearts of men. It was in meditation that I got that. So when I'm praying for favor, based on the strength of the understanding that has been born via meditation, my prayer carries weight to compel the manifestation of that which I pray. You know why many people don't believe their prayers? Because it is empty, no weight. They don't know the equation that supports the answer of that prayer. Oh, but the Bible says this is the confidence that we have in him. That whatever we ask, he hears. So you use your spirit man to engage on a search anywhere anywhere many of us need to break out from this mentality where it is when you are at home or you are in church that you can be in the presence of god there is nothing like being in the presence of god again for a new testament believer no we just use that cliche to talk about coming under this corporate assembly but the bible says this Know ye not that you are the temple of God. You are the vessel that carries God. In other words, you are the presence of God. The presence of a man announces the man. If I put on a perfume now and I enter this hall, by perceiving that perfume, you know that I'm around. That means when you enter a place because you are the career of God, people should know God has arrived because you are the presence of God. So we move from the mindset of going into the presence of God to carrying the presence of God. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man. Listen, when you see me praying for people, Watch the way I do it. I just stand. And then you see them fall under the anointing. I have a consciousness that as I stand, the presence of God is standing face to face with this individual. And there is an energy from that presence that is entering that person. And all of a sudden, you see them go under the anointing. But the way, the pathway is by meditation. You engage your spirit. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, as we close, it says, eyes have not seen nor ears heard, neither has he entered the heart of men, the things that God has prepared for those that love him. But verse 10 says that God has revealed these things to us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. Verse 11, for what man knoweth the things of man, said the spirit of man that is in him. He said, even so no man can know the things of God, save the spirit of God. 12 says, but we have received the spirit not of the world, but the spirit that is of God, that we may freely know the things that have been given to us. The spirit of God in your life has made you a searching instrument that you can probe into the heart of God and download secrets that make for your dominion there was so much of revelation that jesus accumulated from the father that he just steps into a territory demons cry we know you you are the son of god including people that had never met him all their life why can't you carry god like that why must you wait for only your pastor why can't you bring yourself to that point friends we must contend for light after everything is said and done, be determined to be a heavyweight in the spirit. Be determined to carry a degree of light. The Bible says Jesus returned in the power of, his, of the spirit. And without any crusade, his fame spread abroad. That means influence is a spiritual reality. 
You know, there are a lot of celebrities on social media. They call them social influencers. They do all kinds of things just to gain popularity. Some of them post nude pictures about themselves. Some of them make nude videos about themselves. Like in Nigeria now, if you don't put a video where somebody dances half naked, you will not sell. It's not true. There is something you can carry from the word of God that makes you light, that can shine anywhere, anywhere. Yesterday, I was watching Dr. Panam Pasipo, the crusade with Dr. Kumuyu. He just did his ministration normally. He wasn't doing like he was beckoning to people. But I saw a level of mastery. Not just mastery in music, but mastery in the presence of God. Many of you need to carry that dimension of the presence of God and see if the curses in your family will not be broken. 430 years they stayed in Egypt, but it took one night for them to come out. In one night, the light of God can shine in your life and all the demons in your family will let go. And tonight, everything that is a limitation, an obstacle in your life, by the power of light from God's word, it is falling down. Are we ready to pray? Please stand on your feet like victorious people. Prayer number one. I come against the limitations that ignorance has brought on any area of my life in the name of Jesus. And I declare that I'm victorious by the power of light. Lift your voice and pray. I come against every limitation that ignorance has brought and I declare that I'm victorious by the power of light. Lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. Limitations in health, limitations in finances, limitations in my career, limitations in my business. Are you praying? Are you praying? Prayer number two, I receive grace to embark on a search in the word of God until I receive light. Lift your voice and pray in the name of Jesus. I receive grace. The grace to be disciplined. In the story of the world, I receive a grace to be disciplined. Are you praying at all? Are you praying at all? I receive a grace to be disciplined. A grace to be disciplined. Let's 
Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I shake off laziness. Over my life. Over my life. Every form of laziness. Every form of laziness. That sponsors idleness. That sponsors idleness. That sponsors ignorance. That sponsors ignorance. In the word of God. In the word of God. I shake it off. I shake it off. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Open your mouth and pray. Shake off. Shake off. Shake off. Shake off. Shake off. Shake off. Every sort of laziness, every sort of Now we are going to pray some atomic prayers that will command a release in our destinies. Isaiah 16 verse 1. We are going to pray some, some real prayers now that will break some things. And that light that God has placed in you will come out, will become visible in this season. Say amen. amen. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Verse 3. He said, the gentiles shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising. I want to prophesy on the strength of this scripture that this season is your season of visibility. Amen. Visibility to those that must favor you. Amen. Visibility to opportunities that will lift you. Amen. Visibility to your miracle. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Say after me, I decree and declare. I, I decree, decree and I declare. That this is my season. That this, this is my season, season of visibility. Of visibility. No, we are not praying like we have life in us. Amen. Say after me, I decree and declare. I decree and declare that this is my season. That this is my season of visibility. Of visibility. By the power of light. By the power of light. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. This is my season. Jesus, 
Hallelujah. Now some warfare prayers and will be done tonight. Say after me, powers of the second heavens. Powers of the second heavens. Now you notice from last week that there's been a shift, okay? That's the reason why we are praying these kind of prayers. The Bible says there are forces in the heavenlies. They are called spiritual wickedness. Remember that the luminary bodies that God created to give light on the earth are where? In the heavens. So these forces regulate the visibility of men. And those are the forces that we want to bring down. Say after me, powers of the second heaven. Powers of the second heaven. Attempting to cover my visibility. Attempting to cover my visibility. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Listen, I like you to pray these prayers very well. Hey. They were born by revelation. There are powers that hang over regions, over cities, over families, attempting to limit the rising of men. But tonight we are bringing down those powers. The Bible says in Zechariah chapter 1 verse 18. Listen, we are going to pray. It says, I saw four horns. And I asked the angel, what be these? And he said, these are the horns that have lifted up their head over 
Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. What does it mean? Judah means praise. Israel means dominion, strength. Jerusalem is the presence of God. So these horns want to fight, number one, your praise. That there will be no reason for you to praise God. That there will be no miracle in your life for you to praise God. Number two, they attempt to fight your strength to make you weak at all times. Number three, they attempt to fight, if possible, absorb the presence of God from your life. The Bible called them horns. Horns of witchcraft. And they must go down this night. Listen, pray this prayer this night. And I believe that a strong man in somebody's family will go down today. Yeah. Say after me, powers of witchcraft. Powers of witchcraft. Fighting my visibility. Fighting my visibility. Be destroyed by fire. Be destroyed by fire. Powers of witchcraft. Powers of witchcraft. Fighting my visibility. Fighting my visibility. Be destroyed by fire. Be destroyed by fire. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus. Say after me, every powers of evil foundation. Every powers of evil foundation. Now those of you who were around or followed online last week, you know what we are talking about, right? Say after me, every Every powers of evil foundation, every powers of evil foundation, ancestral or territorial, ancestral or territorial, fighting my rising, fighting my rising, and shining, and shining, be uprooted, be uprooted, and destroyed, and destroyed, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Open your mouth and pray. Hallelujah. Listen, 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 please. We are going to pray that prayer again. When we talk about territory, we are not just talking about geographical location. Your office is a territory. Your marketplace is a territory. There are powers that are bent on not seeing you rise. In your academic qualification, in your career, in your business. There are powers that will not allow you to change from being a single to being married and settled. Say after me, every power of evil foundation. Every power of evil foundation. 
ancestral or territorial, ancestral or territorial, fighting my rising and shining, fighting my rising and shining. Be uprooted, be uprooted and destroyed, and destroyed. In, the in the name of Jesus. Now open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Be uprooted, 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 be In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have to rush because of time. Ah, my last key. Listen, this prayer that you are about to pray now has a lot of spiritual intelligence interwoven. And some of you will begin to see the results again and again. I told you that influence is a force. Listen, there are times when I'm in long intercession and God will begin to give me prayer points. He will dictate it and say, pray this, pray this. And 10 out of 10 times I pray those prayers, I see results. This prayer, I want you to pray like you will explode. But I want you to listen to the intelligence of the prayer point. Say after me, I announce my identity. I announce, I announce my, my identity, identity to my destiny helpers. My, my destiny helpers. And declare. And declare that they begin to locate me. That they begin to locate me. By the power of the prophetic. By the power of the prophetic. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Some people are smiling. <laughs> listen. Listen. The Bible says his fame spread abroad. He had not done any crusade. There is such a mystery. Your identity is who you are in the spirit. That there is a force that can take your name to somebody in Australia. That must help you. And the person will not stop until they find you. The Bible says the disciples came to Jesus and said, All men seek thee. All men. How many of you love this prayer? You are going to pray to the people that must help you. They are somewhere. But it takes a force to make them locate you. Say after me, I announce my identity. I announce my identity to my destiny helpers. To my destiny helpers. I hope you know you two are also a destiny helper. So as somebody is announcing an identity here, it's getting to another person's heart. I hope you know that's how it works. So. Amen. Some of you are here. As you are praying this prayer, your name is ringing in your boss's mind. I'm telling you. That's when you know that opportunities are not lost in the kingdom. They are only exchanged. I announce my identity. I announce my identity. To my destiny helpers. To my destiny helpers. And I declare. And I declare. That they begin to locate me. That they begin to locate me. By the power of the prophetic. By the power of the prophetic. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Like you have lost your mind. Pray like you have lost your mind. Pray like you have lost your mind.
I hope we are not too tired. Last prayer. Say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Everyone designated to bless me. Everyone designated to bless me. Everyone designated to help me. Everyone designated to help me. I hope that language is correct. Designated, right? Designed, designated. You know what we are talking about. The realm of the spirit knows what we are talking about. Everyone designed to help me. Everyone designed to help me. Listen. There is somebody customized by God in every season of your life to help you. There was a Pharaoh for a Joseph. There was a Samuel for a Saul. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Everyone designed to bless me. Everyone designed to bless me. Everyone designed to help me. Everyone designed to help me. Everyone designed to favor me. Everyone designed to favor me. In this season. In this season. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Arrest them. Arrest them. Seize their peace. Seize their peace. Until they do the needful. Until they, they do, do the needful. Open your mouth and blast. They come back to bread dogs. 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 They how you engage the power of light this is how dominion is you put pressure on the realm of spirits and the realm of men until they deliver that which God has designed for you Thank you, Father.
Please lift your hands. That lady, the fair one. Yes, come. Just can I pray for you? The Lord said I should lay my hands on you. Just lift your hands. I'll lay hands on you. I want to pray some prayers. There are going to be a few deliverances now. And then I'm going to prophesy on our lives. Some of you don't know the implication of your prayers. But in 24 hours time. In 48 hours time. In 72 hours. In one week. This is what light does. No other force gives you this audacity to make this kind of demands but the power of light. Please lift your hands. I want to pray. Just clash the symbols for me. Come, my dear. Let me lay hands on you. Father, I use her as a point of contact to everyone connected to her by blood. And in the name of Jesus, every restraint from the kingdom of darkness over the destinies of men is broken now. Is broken now. Loose! In the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone here. There are chains I'm seeing that must come down. Please lift your hands. Anyone connected to any family here. That the manipulation of witchcraft has held the destinies of men. Financial destinies. Marital destinies. Spiritual destinies. In a name that is above every other name. I command the chains of witchcraft to be broken. I command the chains of witchcraft to be broken. I arrest the powers of witchcraft. And I declare be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken now. There will be reactions now. I come against ancestral or territorial powers, forces from your background that fight your finances, that fight your career, your academic advancement, your spiritual advancement, maternal or paternal, I send fire against those forces. I send the fire of deliverance. I set the fire of deliverance and I command that destinies be released now. Be released now. Be released now. The power of God is here. It's walking here. I feel it very strong. It's walking. It's walking right now. There's a lady on this place. I heard a loud shout. And it's a lady I saw in the spirit from here. All of you just lift your hands. There's a walk of deliverance. Father, I stretch my right hand. The right hand of God is power. And I declare from the left to the right, all across this section of the auditorium. Who is that one person? Whose life, whose destiny, whose family must be set free? At the count of three, I release the fire of deliverance. Let the chains be broken. One, two, three. Holy Ghost. If you get them, bring them out. If you get them, just bring them. Holy Ghost. Please lift your hands if you can. Eyes closed. There's a deliverance that God wants to do now. I don't know. Please don't be ashamed, but God wants to set you free. The Lord showed me in a vision. Somebody here. You can just eyes close everywhere. Allow the ushers to do their work. Let them go now. Let them go. 
you devil of darkness out of this family and her life and set them free now bring her let me touch her head bring her I break your hold in the name of Jesus let them go There's that deliverance is still happening. The Lord showed me a person. Don't worry, I'm going to pray and there will be reactions. I saw that your underwear was taken. They took your underwear. Please don't feel ashamed, but I know what I saw. This was a vision God showed me. And the proof would be that there will be a manifestation here. Because deliverance is coming. Your underwear was taken. I don't know for whatever diabolic purpose or witchcraft it was taken to a place and that is the reason why your destiny is going at a very slow pace now holy spirit whoever that person is all across this hall i release your fire of deliverance no don't say amen just the strings don't say amen because there will be a manifestation here eyes closed everywhere Whoever that person is, Holy Ghost, or whoever they are, I send the fire of deliverance. I step into the realm of the spirit. I go back in time and I retrieve that underwear wherever it was taken to. And I set fire on the altars of darkness. And in the name of Jesus, deliverance is commanded now. Deliverance. Ushers, if you get the people, bring them for me. I command deliverance now. 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 Touch. If you get that person, bring the person out. The fire of God is still working. Whatever was taken away from your life, whatever was taken away from your life and was used for witchcraft against your destiny in the name of Jesus, let there be separation by fire. By fire, by fire, by fire, by fire, by fire. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. You're the miracle working love. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. this one I'm seeing is a young man I said close eyes everywhere this one I'm seeing is a young man because I, I saw a young man and I heard a shout in the spirit and God is saying I should cause ancestral altars in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth who died and rose on the third day I challenge ancestral altars altars of witchcraft altars of occultism Altars of necromancy in the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost said, I should stamp my feet on the ground three times. I stamp my feet on the ground three times. Let those altars be crushed now. And let deliverance come to that life, to that boy, to that family. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You 
will never be the same. You've touched his grace. Soft. You will never be the same. His grace. Your life must change. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. It's over. Parabakos kafra de la vaske. Skeba branda brada la vasia da bagura. Janada brana malanas. My dear, come. Can I pray for you? Come. What's your name? The young man I'm looking for. The power of God comes upon you, young man. And the limitation is broken. I don't know you, but the Lord said I should prophesy a season of favor for you. Are you hearing me? The things that have been stuck, they're about to move again. It's like hold up, but there's about to be a release. And I see a season of abundance coming immediately after that. In the name of Jesus, hold my hand. So shall it be. I release the grace. Let the Cyrus anointing come upon you. The grace that brings down the gates of brass and the bars of iron Amen. brings down every limitation. Amen. Stand upon your life and give you access. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Shadrach, Sozo, Prodo, Bahaska, Balahari, Mahandis, 
Your fire is restored. Fresh fire. Bola banas ke bola dabasia. Saba la habra zizo pronde ke basia banas. Skere bende solo manas. Can I pray for you? Just hold my hand. your hands and give the Lord praise. Now deliverance is separating the spirit component or the spirit behind a cause. Once you get the spirit out, the afflictions will naturally just die. The Bible says, shall the prey be taken away from the mighty, or the lawful captives deliver? He said, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken, and the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. For I will contend with him that contends. Now, I'm just quoting scripture. This is the power of light. I'm just quoting scripture. The Bible says, the light shines in darkness. When you are filled with the word of God, demons will not stand you. Which of you wants to do deliverance now? Come. Yes, come. Just put your hand on her head. 
make sure you touch the hair very well and pray in tongues pray in tongues Put your hand again. Just pray in tongues. If it's more than you, don't worry. I will come. Okay, put your hand on her stomach now. I command the devil to go. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of Jesus. It's all right. Okay, all of you, just leave her. an altar call now before we close tonight next Sunday is the last super Sunday please don't miss it next Sunday is going to be a feast of miracles and the glory how many of you have seen have not seen a creative miracle before huh I know most of what we have seen is healings I would have prayed for the sick tonight but let's leave it till next week because of time Many of us have seen healings, but I'm talking about real miracles, creative ones that are visible to the eye. God is going to do great things next week. And next week, we are going to pray for the sick, especially those who are far from here. So I want you, when coming, come with somebody. It will not be too good if you come alone. Come with somebody and watch God do mighty things. Next week crowns the seven super Sundays. So let's trust God to do great and mighty things. And many of you are going to have impartations come upon you. There's going to be a weight of the glory. Oh, I feel the anointing that will come in this place. So let's prepare for next week in the name of Jesus. foundational deliverance eh? what you are seeing is she manifesting but there are altars going down where she is now I declare in the name of Jesus by the power of light the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehends it not By the power of light, let her go. In the name of Jesus. Can we wave our hands and give God praise? Thank you.
Amen. Father, we give you glory. Blessed be your name. She's free. In Jesus' name. Now, before we go, if you are here, all standing, if you can, we're out of time. We have to close. And you know you need to give your heart to the Lord. You need to be born again. I said that being born again is the first requirement to accessing light. The life of God you must have in you. Or possibly you want to rededicate your life afresh to God. If only people can be bold enough to admit how much of Jesus they need. We'll have many more salvations in our time that we are seeing. But the Bible says, Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. While we are all standing, if you are here, you want to give your heart to the Lord. Or you want to rededicate your life afresh. You want to surrender to him afresh. Wherever you are, I want you to lift your right hand. I'll pray with you briefly and then we are done tonight. Lift your right hand. Lift your right hand. If there is none, then we'll just close. Lord, we give you praise. There's somebody? Okay, God bless you. God bless you. Please come, my dear. And if anybody's joining her, join her now. I pledge allegiance to the we all If you are coming to Jesus, come. such an anointing in this place there's such a presence Lord we give you praise those of you in front I want you to put your right hand on your chest you are going to make a prayer of surrender and I want you to mean it from your heart while I'm praying for them if you know God is convicting your heart Keep your pride aside and join them now. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I repent of my ways. I receive eternal life. And I thank you for saving me. I am yours, both now and forever. And I declare that you are my Lord forevermore in Jesus name Father I pray for these ones in the name of Jesus by the authority of the word of God their sins are forgiven I declare that they are born again and in the name of Jesus the life and the spirit of God comes into their souls I pray from today that they will live victoriously above sin above death above Satan above hell and the grave and Lord, I declare that they will serve you all the days of their lives. Their seed shall serve you all the days of their lives. In Jesus' precious name.